All right. So um, now, from a, I got from a, an advanced spiritual student. Um, suddenly, you know, things going well at work, and then suddenly having kind of a gossipy narcissist, very difficult colleague to deal with. And having to spend a lot of time with that person, it's like you're trapped with that person mm -hmm. in the company. I mean, the, um, generally speaking, like if you're doing a lot of spiritual work like Hawkins, A Course in Miracles, a lot of clearing, there can be periods where you feel quite immune to the world and people seem to be nice. And that can often happen for various reasons, good karma, also just applying, when you start applying spiritual tools with great sincerity, one often can have a, a really long phase of spiritual grace. Mm -hmm. But eventually you're going to pull up, uh, pull up you know, some negative karma for various reasons. You know, everything is in divine order. You, know, you might have had a past lifetime where you weren't, you weren't a pleasant colleague to work with. Also as well, if you're, um, for, for whatever reason you, you go into a department, it could be for, for, with divine grace you go into a <coughs> a department where everyone's of a, a relatively good level of consciousness. But also as well, when you go into a company and you're trying to do a lot of spiritual work, basically what you're doing is you're clearing. You're clearing the energy of the company. So when you're clearing, like, let's say uh, you're doing spiritual work and your calibration is now quite high, and you're in a relatively high consciousness level uh, department of the company, eventually you know, every le a company has its own level of consciousness and it will try and defend its level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So when you start trying to be integrous and nice and like, imagine like Dr. Hugh Len, like trying to, you know, managing to, to forgive all the data of all of those criminals in a prison and everyone getting well. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get, when you're trying to clear the stuff, you, so if you go into a, con into a company and you're trying to clear the negative data, you're forgiving this person, you're praying for a miracle to see that person, you're going to the observer and the detached observer, you're basically clearing the negativity in that company and in your own consciousness. So eventually all the unpleasant characters are going to come your way. Because, because for a company to support, support a level of consciousness, you know, uh, if the consciousness gets too high, you know, someone's radiating out too much light, you know, those things will come into confrontation with you. They'll suddenly come into your department. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you've got a high consciousness and, uh, you know, they're at a low consciousness. Mm -hmm. So if you've got high, a light and there's darkness in various people around in the company, and that company has a level of consciousness, let's say it's just under integrity, and there's some department maybe above integrity, a few people might be quite well, eventually those other people are not going to do like someone doing a lot of spiritual work. Not, they don't know it. But they'll eventually come in and they'll see someone who's quite peaceful and quite serene and they won't like it. They won't consciously like it, but something in them will be like, start, will start gossiping, will start attacking that person, will start being very unpleasant. Because non-integrity doesn't like integrity. Mm -hmm. Non-integrity mm -hmm. likes non-integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm gossiping and, and want to talk about stealing the other, other people's donuts, I want, to talk, I want to be around people who, who enjoy my conversation about gossiping and donuts. If some, someone's not gossiping after I've gossiped, then I feel uncomfortable. Like, I've just gossiped about everyone and how everyone's horrible in this company. I've told you what I think is horrible, and you're not telling me what's horrible about everyone as well. You should be agreeing with, you know, <laughs> that boss is cheating on his wife, mm -hmm. and he's a no-good, no-gooder. Don't you agree? You know? <laughs> And what do you mean you think is quite nice and pleasant? You know, it's like, or if you don't talk, just respond back. They'll get it if you're trying to change the subject. You know, they won't like it. So now they'll, they'll have a thing to pull you down or even take you out if they've got the power to take you out. You know, you know they'll go to the, to the up, to thingy's up manager. Like, there's something wrong with this guy. You know, he's, you know, I just, you know, let's take off. I think this guy should be taken out, you know. Maybe we should put him on disciplinary. <laughs> it's like, so this kind of thing, because they don't like it. You know, when you're in non-integrity, and, 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 you, and you like gossiping, and you like having 50 beers and 15 donuts and McDonald's, and you're not doing that, it's, it's deeply... So all those people, is, and you're trying to clear the energy. 
So there, it's like if you're trying to raise the consciousness of a company, then those people can't survive if the company goes to a higher and higher level. It becomes more unbearable for them. It's like since that guy's come into work, less people are gossiping. Uh, people are they're starting to talk about honesty in the company. It's like something's going wrong. And I think it all started when that guy joined the company. You know, so it's going to go. It's going to be like you've got to really, you know, you're speaking to the boss. I think there's something wrong with that guy. You know. Or you might make up lies about that guy. Mm. Or you might even plant something in his desk. Look, there was this, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's part of the mafia. I've just read he's got mafia weekly in his, in his, in his, in his thing, or whatever it is. So, so, you're, so as you start to do that, now if, if, they're, if they're with you, there's often, uh, often when there's something very intense, there'll be either in this lifetime or past lifetime a reason why. Often your greatest thing. So I like what Hawkins said. Is like I pray for forgiveness. Mm. You know, like uh, I've, I can share one of my. You know, like I've got like I've had a lot of experiences with bad bil with builders and traders who have been like really uh, not honest. You know, I've, I've, you know, I'm pretty sure in a past lifetime I've been like a, a dishonest. You know, it's probably a dishonest property property person who would probably like you know like I want rent and then give you like a crappy place to live in, full of leaks, and you'd complain, be cold. I'd, say, I'd probably just say, I just want my rent money, oh, you're, you're, you're out, something like that. So I get all these people mm. now. So Hawkins said, like, I pray for, it's a prayer, the anti-karma prayer. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me. Um, so if it was a gossipy thing, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who was a gossip, a negative gossip in this lifetime and past lifetimes. So, or I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who likes to sabotage people who are peaceful and serene and attack them. So, you know, so it's like, so that's one way of dealing with the anti-karma prayer because that often you have very, when, people, when there's a heavy relationship with somebody, there's often a lot of past lives associated with that person. It's like they're back you know, they're back to sort of even the score, you know, because, you know, in the past lifetime, I was the one who was like stabbing them in the back. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're back. So it's like, but I can let that go if I forgive them, you know, or I pray for forgiveness. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's done that. Or, you know, it's about clearing the data. You know, we, we use in this group the word transcend. Mm -hmm. So having the word transcend, but you know, having it, you can recontextualize it like, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to being loving and tolerant and forgiving with this person for the highest good of the whole company. So that, the, you know, so that I can clear this energy for the betterment of the whole company. And that can recontextualize it. And you have the energy of a high level of consciousness to go behind you. But I, I like transcending things. So I did that with my mother. It's like, what are the hooks? What are the hooks I have to transcend? Transcend not buying into gossip. Uh, transcend not buying into uh, so gossiping and, and neg gossiping and negativity or something like that wasn't it? It was gossipy and negative I think. Yeah so if they're gossiping and negative then you know not buying into it. If you don't buy into it they'll try and hook you into it but you still have to like go to the observer See if you can, like I used to tell people like go to the observer, go to the, have a toilet break and go into the strong observer and then go in and then, uh, and then try and tame the observer. And if you get hooked out, go to the observer of, that's, of that which got hooked in. Also practice at home. Write down all the things that hooked you out with this person. They gossiped about the virus and I got hooked out. So another thing to do, which we do in here, is cancel beliefs or God did not create it. So you can... Now, another tool that I do... When you, when you pray or cancel something over and over again, like I cancel my belief in being affected by coronavirus, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. God did not create coronavirus. Oh, I cancel my belief in being affected by gossip. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. God did not create gossip, and so it is not real. God did not create negative colleagues, and so they're not real. I cancel my belief in hooking into negative colleagues. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. When I do that, oh, remember, when you say God did not create it, it's not real, you disappear that, 
It's because you only track and remember things in consciousness because they're meaningful, yeah? Otherwise, when people are talking or saying or doing negative stuff, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't experience it because it has no meaning for you. So what you're doing when you're saying, I cancel my belief, I'm an infinite being. When you're in the infinite, you're in the infinite light, you clear it. Imagine a belief and then you clear it in light and you disappear it, yeah? Or you're just washing that belief system, that, that hook out of your consciousness. I hope this makes sense. Every time I say, I cancel my belief, I'm an infinite being, or God did not create, it's not real. It's like you're deleting that data from hooking into that data ever again in your experience. You're deleting it from your consciousness. What you'll find is you'll start to get an immunity. Like if you're, you know, even a prayer for forgiveness, you know, but you're in, what you're doing is you're deleting that data in light at home. Or you can practice. Also, if a colleague does something and it brings up emotions, you have to feel the feelings out. Mm -hmm. So, you, like, let's say the, 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 your colleague says, like, you're not, you're not participating in my gossiping around all the people at work. If you don't participate in this, I'm going to tell the boss that, you know, there's something wrong with you. You know, whatever it is, you know, you don't fit in with our culture, you know, you're not one of the lads, you know, I think uh, you, you don't have great social skills, you know, when we gossip, you should gossip. Whatever it is, I'm going to tell the boss about you. So, you have to, you have to cancel that. What you'll find is, as you do the cancelling beliefs of going to the observer or feel the feelings out, you'll, what I find with those difficult personalities, as you clear it in your consciousness, you'll find, even though you're dealing with someone difficult, like, aid will come to you in unexpected ways to protect you. I had this with a neighbour who was uh, trying to uh, stop planning permission happening. And as I was praying my ass off for him every day, like hundreds of times, you know, it's like he would try and call the inspectors around, like, I think their building is like three inches too, too big, so it should be taken down. And, like, and that was tr it was actually something true, I think. He had measured it, and it was a, sl it was a few inches too big. But you know, the spectre would come around and it would just be, I was praying. I, I knew, like, you know, that's, you know, it's more or less the right height, you know, don't worry about it. You know. So everything was going my way, people were sympathetic to it. And I, I knew it was because I was putting so much light and forgiveness into it. It's like God starts defending you. When you start holding fear and attack, mm -hmm. and you're holding information in your consciousness, then things start to go more wrong for you. So you want to sort of clear it. Um, I always think that if I'm having difficulty with someone, it's a karmic assignment. That's helpful to me because I think, you know, I always think like, okay, you're trying to take advantage of me financially in this lifetime. I probably took it, you know, I, I remember one of my favorite things when I heard Hawkins talk about, when you, meeting enlightened teachers take advantage of it because they always laugh. Uh, they always laugh at the, the, the troubles in life. So he said like, I remember I laughed as well. It was like, if your wife runs off with, with another man and takes the Mercedes, just say that pays that one off mm -hmm. and just laugh and let it go. It's like, well, you know, I've had to live with this gossipy colleague for the last three months, but and now they've gone, but I paid that one off, you know, and you have a chuckle. So, so those are the things I would do um, if they're narcissistic. Not narcissism, yeah. If they're narcissistic, um, i.e. they seem to be ruthless, cold, uh, they self-absorbed, uh, seem to have no empathy with you, uh, and seem to be, or tr trying to make, f have gratification out of unsavory topics, then um, I would, I'd probably try and transcend it. I mean, trying to, trying to you know, sometimes, you know, even the miraculous happens I found uh, myself that when you pray, transcend, forgive, either one of two things will happen. Yeah, I think from my experience and others, when you do a lot of spiritual work on someone who's very difficult, one of two things will happen. They will either raise in consciousness and suddenly become nice, or God will take them out. I've shared this in my, in my book, Bulletproof Peace, not an advert, but anyway. But um, I had a lady in a 12-step group who I mean, I like using the word God a lot, and she was a very strong atheist. So we had a very difficult time. She was, you know, I always attracted these very dominant, very aggressive women. And so she, she wasn't backing down. It was so intense, the atmosphere, and she was, she'd be there. 
And I was just praying and praying and cancelling my beliefs and doing the observer and feeling all the feelings out. God bless the woman. And then one day I woke up and it was like God had taken, had taken that resentment out of me. I just felt love for her. It was like this thing of love, like everything, there wasn't anything, you know, I was just going to have love for her when I saw her in the, in the meeting. And went there, and there she was, and at the end of the meeting she came up to me and said, and she said this, I remember it so clearly because it was such a big thing. She said, you've taught me a great spiritual lesson, but I want you to know I'm leaving the country. Mm. And, she, she, and she was going, and, it's like, and I knew that thing, it was like God decided she wasn't going to raise, but God was going to take her to another, another country. I no longer had to sort of deal with that. So I uh, hope that was 